Are you looking for ways to reduce costs on your homestead? In this video, we'd like to share 10 of our favorite ways to save money or old-fashioned frugal living tips that we have found successful on our homestead. Hi, welcome back to our channel. I'm Alicia from the blog homemadehomestead.com and today I have with me my husband Matthew. Hello! So we wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, cost saving tips because everyone wants to save money, um, especially these days. If you jump online um, and look up, you know, Google things like saving money, uh, most of it is talking to you about getting out of debt. Um, which is a great idea, but it's about things like, you know, pay off your mortgage quickly, um, don't get a, a car loan, you know, pay off those student loans, all of those types of things, or don't buy big toys like boats, RVs, TVs, things like that. But today we want to share with you um, smaller tips um, geared towards homesteading, since we're homesteaders, and these things um, are things that we have lived um, throughout the last few years and have really um, saved us a lot of money. So the first uh, frugal living tip is to grow your own food. Now this might seem obvious because we are homesteaders and this is what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Every year. Yep. But um, Let's see, there's a variety of benefits towards gardening and of course raising your own livestock, but when I talk about growing your own food, I'm talking about vegetables because raising your own livestock is not exactly cost saving. It's more about the quality of food that you're receiving um, or growing. But um, when I talk about saving money, I'm talking about growing your own tomatoes, your cucumbers, zucchinis, things like that. And comparing it to the cost of purchasing organic um, vegetables or fruits in the store. If you go into the grocery store and buy one of those little plastic packs of tomatoes, they, in our area, are about three... It might be four dollars now. It's very um, expensive. <laughs> yeah, they are not budget friendly. That's for sure. And if you have, in you know, a large family, that little box of tomatoes goes so quick. I mean, it lasts maybe a couple meals. So compare that to growing your own food. You can start with a starter plant that you buy at the greenhouse, mm -hmm. um, and. That's a little bit more costly to do it that way, but still cheaper than purchasing it in the grocery store. Um, or you can start your own seed, um, which is saves a ton of money. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, those packs cost two or three dollars a piece and you get dozens of seeds in there, sometimes even more. And that one little seed will grow into a nice large tomato plant, which will feed your family throughout the summer. And if you multiply those tomato plants and have a bunch, not only is it going to feed your family throughout the summer with lots of fresh uh, produce, but it will also um, feed your family perhaps throughout the fall and winter if you preserve them, you know, by canning, dehydrating, freezing, and my favorite way, fermenting. Um, so if you compare growing your um, own vegetables and fruits to buying the organic stuff, it saves you a lot of money. And it's also healthier and tastes better. Mm -hmm. um, and you may have to put a little bit of upfront cost into it by purchasing some containers or some dirt or some, you know, shovels and tools like that. But overall, um, it, it is a tremendous cost saver. Well, going hand in hand with growing your own veggies and fruits is preserving them. I'm talking about everything from just bagging them up and throwing them into the freezer, from canning, from dehydrating, from fermenting, and storing in cold storage, such as a fridge or a deep freezer. We have four, uh, because one for our beef, one for our chickens, one for our dairy, and then 
one for all the fruits and veggies that we're going to get from our harvest. And all that just saves because I believe last year, how many months did we survive on all of our green beans that we grew that summer? We made it through most of the winter, I think. Maybe we stopped in March? Just shy of April. Yeah, just shy of like April. That. But we were able to, we didn't have to go to the store and buy those supplies. We didn't have to get that food because it was already ours and we preserved it. And by preserving it, we were able to enjoy it at a future time. So I encourage you, especially if you are uh, making yourself a, a larger garden or whatnot, be prepared. Get those deep freezers, you know, seven cubic feet, uh, maybe something a little smaller and cheaper, however you see fit. And um, again, just like gardening, you have to go and buy either a deep freezer or something or plastic bags or canning, which uh, is not my specialty. My specialty is able to put stuff in the deep freeze, but <laughs> the... But there's a, a, a numeral ways of preserving your food. So that's number two, preserving after plum harvesting. Ooh. The third way to save money on your homestead is to make meals at home. So clearly you reduce cost if you don't go whizzing through the drive through every night or mm. buying snacks and goodies at the grocery store or the gas station. Um, so making all of those meals at home obviously saves a lot of money. But what about um, making the ingredients that make those meals or go into those meals, I should say. So for instance, if you want to make chicken noodle soup at home, why not make that um, broth at home? Or not use those bones from the chicken that you roasted last night and turn them into a chicken broth. Or put them into your instant pot and make bone broth. I have a tutorial over on the blog if you want to learn how to make that bone broth. Another way is to, if you want to make a salad, instead of buying that salad dressing, why not make that dressing at home? We love to make a um, uh, homemade Italian dressing, and you can grab that recipe over on the blog as well. But it tastes great on salads, and it makes a great dip that you can even use as a, as a marinade. Um, if you are going to serve up, say, a, a, another roast chicken, or maybe steak, or a pot roast one night, instead of getting, you know, um, some pre-baked buns at um, the grocery store or a can of rolls. Um, make bread at home. You know, that will save money and, and you'll feel better with it, especially if you're grinding your own grains and making your own flour. And the quality is just better. Mm -hmm. These simple switches will not only be better for your body, but better for your wallet as well. So number four on our little list is creating your own care products and cleaning products. Now I have a couple of varieties with me right here. But before all this, when we first got married and moved in, we had boxes of different cleaning implements from the big box stores. Uh, full of all those fun chemicals that you just can't pronounce and you know they're probably not good for you. Mm -hmm. um, we tried, you know, you ever try cleaning a, a bathroom with half of those chemicals and then you got to let the window open because you just can't breathe in there? Wouldn't it be nice to actually be able to clean and breathe at the same time? You can by making stuff with natural ingredients. We have here, this is a, our kitchen, you can find this on, on the uh, website. Uh, this is our kitchen cleaner and this is just a nice little hand soap formula that we made using natural ingredients that any homesteader is going to have in their house, um, such as vinegar, um, Castile um, soap. Uh, what other ingredients? Well, a lot of them are water-based. Mm -hmm. um, right and there. then you have lots of essential oils or herbs that you can infuse into them. And, you know, I'll, I'll in, um, add to what Matthew said that when we got rid of a lot of our products, you know, we had this, you know, underneath our kitchen sinks or bathroom sinks were tons of chemicals that we didn't really use. No. You know, we, we had one for this job, one for that job, you know, but really we only used a couple of them. And not only did 
it helped save us money to get rid of them and start making our own, but it also reduced the toxins um, in our environment and that we were putting on our skin. And is there anything you want to add? <laughs> well, in addition just to these, you can make stuff such as, uh, again, you can find on our website, uh, bars of soap. You can find uh, different lotions and uh, rubs, uh, even something as going to the store and trying to find some chemical way of soaking your feet when you could just grab some herbs from your garden and which I affectionately call one of the uh, stylings as the uh, chicken seasoning a foot rub <laughs> and uh, just using what you have and not having to put any nasty chemicals with it mm -hmm. so I think that would conclude that one yeah and making all of these things um you know, making our own soap at home, um, making our own lip balm and stuff. Not only was it more natural, but it definitely saved us a lot of money and actually space in our house. Definitely. Too. <laughs> when we got rid of all those chemicals, uh, we had at least three boxes just filled from mm -hmm. from all the different restrooms, from uh, the sink, the uh, the kitchen, the mudroom, etc. Just all these things that we had no longer use for. Mm -hmm. um, we have really reduced our chemical footprint in that in that sense and replaced it with stuff that you don't have to worry if you get on your skin it's going to cause a rash or burning sensation or anything like mm -hmm. that and you can actually work and you know if the windows open it's not so it's for you to breathe it's just so you can enjoy the fresh air mm -hmm. so that's a for me for someone that does a lot of cleaning around here is as much as the misses it's uh, always good to have that kind of stuff on standby and it saves you money. Yep. And anyone can make it. You can find the recipes for a variety of things on the blog. But, you know, no matter how busy you are, most of these things just take minutes to make. Minutes. Yep. So, number five on our list is skip using paper products. And this is paper cups, napkins, <laughs> plates, all of those types of things. They seem convenient, believe us. You can buy, you know, a giant stack of them for, for just pennies on the dollar, it seems. But once you use them, that's it. You got to throw them away. And then you're buying them again. Especially in a busy household, that giant stack can go away just like that. Mm -hmm. So what's some alternatives? So instead of using a paper plate, you can use a glass plate, um, same with cups. Um, and instead of using napkins or paper towels, just use your dish rag to wipe up the mess. Um, things like um, napkins, we started making our own last year. So I have an example right here. I just mm. used a piece <laughs> of flannel here that I got at, I think, Joanne's cut it into a rectangle, sewed it around the edges, and then just clipped. So it would kind of create a, a more decorative style, like a rag napkin, like a rag quilt. Um, but there are other places that you can, you don't have to make your own if sewing isn't your thing. Um, TJ Maxx, um, probably Kohl's might sell those. I know Hobby Lobby um, in those seasonal sections mm -hmm. have really pretty um, napkins and they're usually larger, more decorative, but they're real soft and I'm assuming they're absorbent. And so those are, that, that has saved us a lot of money by skipping all those paper products. We don't have to use them anymore. Um, a few additional tips that go in that category are using um, or reducing your number of plastic bags. Um, you know, we use, we still use a, a pretty good amount, um, <laughs> during the summer, you know, when it's, um, harvest time, we oh, yeah. freeze a lot of things in there. But, um, just like everyday uses, we purchase these things called super cubes and they're silicone, like molds. They come in like half, one cup, two cup types of sizes. And we can freeze our leftovers in there. I have frozen dog food in there, um, bone broth, regular chicken and beef broth. And so I can freeze those and store it that way or pop them out and put them into the bag instead of 
filling up separate bags, like one cup per bag, now I have these cubes and can just fill it in a, a giant um, gallon size bag. Um, another way in in this category that you can save money is when you go to make your homemade bread, instead of covering that bread in plastic, you know, when you're proofing it, just use a tea towel or a flour towel. That's how they used to do it. Um, they didn't use plastic, and sometimes you don't even need that. If you're in a in an oven in a warm environment, you don't even need to cover. It's not necessary. Yeah. And for number six, we have simply saving your seeds from the last harvest. Much easier than trying to order online, especially with the demand so high these days. Plus, it's free. <laughs> All you have to do is raise it yourself. Gut out the vegetable, collect the seeds, and you're good for next year. Just make sure that you label them effectively and not spill them like I did last year. That was with the green beans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we could be growing tomatoes where our green beans are for all I know. But, uh, yeah, so save your seeds. It takes just a little extra effort at the end of the season there, and you can have seeds that you knew grew for the next year. Mm -hmm. An average... Um the cost of an average uh, starter plant usually what four to five dollars. Yeah. Yeah, and so a whole pack of seeds just costs three bucks. Yeah, so that seed though that's money in the bank, and you're already set for next spring, or whenever you decide to start getting your seedlings around. Number seven on our list is conserve money on laundry. The first tip is to use less detergent. The recommended cap bowl for the liquid detergent is nearly twice the amount that you actually need. If you use that full amount, it actually traps dirt and stains into your freshly laundered clothes. By using less of this, you'll not only be saving money in your wallet, but you'll also be keeping your clothes cleaner. Next, when it comes to laundry, I would recommend using some dryer balls. These dryer balls last for years and they are much, uh, much cheaper than the liquid fabric softeners and they're much more natural than those dryer sheets. Most are fun to make. Yeah, <laughs> you can buy them online, but you can also just get a ball of, um, 100% wool and kind of wind it up into a ball and tie it off and use that. It's kind of a, like he said, it's a kind of a fun craft. It's a homestead do. date night. You can have the person making the yarn and then your spouse or, you know, whatnot holding it and allowing the yarn to go off their fingers. It's a, and while watching a TV show, like a little cute couple. Yeah. So we made numerous uh, yarn balls doing that. Mm -hmm. So it's a very easy to make, and just a couple of them in your dryer will save you not only money, but make the laundry just that much better. Yeah, it actually um, helps to speed up drying time. So then you're not using as much, much energy, energy when you are drying your laundry. Also, don't be afraid if you think that, um, especially in the hot winter day, uh, hot winter, goodness, the hot summer days, consider a clothesline. Mm -hmm. Having building a clothesline could be as simple as using a sturdy type of yarn and or string and tying it between two places. You can find nice little min minute kits like that at the, your local store. You can find ones that actually have the little wheels that you can pull. And, um, and that will save money on your drying and your electric bill as well. So any way to, any racks that you can make to just dry... That will also save you money on top of the yarn balls and everything else you make. Mm -hmm. And an outdoor clothesline will, um, when you use it in the summer, you have that strong sun, and that will actually help to kill bacteria or remove stains from like your bedding sheets. So we keep on talking about repurposing and reusing, such as seeds, uh, repurposing things. Uh, such as finding new ways to use uh, your laundry outside instead of using the dryer. But let's actually talk about the actual reusing and repurposing. Taking things that no longer have use for one and then turning it into another 
material for a need that you have. Such as, uh, there's on uh, the website, homemadehomestead.com, you'll find a plethora of do-it-yourself projects that are, is all about repurposing. We have a couple of old um, metallic chicken feeders out there, chicken waters, I should say, and how we made flour, you know, a little flower bed for them. Or how Alicia did a project where she took some lap board and made a Christmas a wooden star out of it. A very creative, very nice. Uh, and just a wonderful little decoration and crafting project for you and your loved ones. So, any, you know, you could just hop online. You could read books on all about reusing and repurposing things that one man's junk is truly another man's treasure. And another way that we repurpose something is um, some of our close friends have um, a barn that's falling down. Mm. And we grab some old ladders, some barn ladders from them and put those together, put some kind of fencing on it, and it now serves as a trellis for our green beans in our garden. Yeah. Number nine on our list is to drink more water. Soda is expensive, and so are a lot of those flavored drinks that you can get at the grocery store. Many are not very kind to your waistline, and nor are they very kind to your pocketbook. So by drinking more water, not only will it bring savings to your household, but it will also make your body feel better since your body thrives on drinking water. Mm. If you want to take it one step farther, you can get a reusable container like this instead of buying all those plastic bottles. Just invest in one of these containers like this Yeti or um, there's a lot of them out there. I have, I have one from the Pioneer Woman that's real nice. And just fill it up with water and take it where you go. Um, if drinking water is hard for you, because I know a lot of people like that flavor and stuff, you can make some drinks at home that are primarily water-based. You know, like iced tea, raspberry iced tea, um, strawberry lemonade, or what he has over there are some probiotic um, sodas. They're mainly water-based and they either have some type of um, juice to it or type of sweetener, usually not the bacteria it eats up, but it, it's a great way to get more water into those that don't what, like to drink water um, and still save money rather than going to the store and buying, you know, all those different pops and flavored drinks. And last but not least, number 10, start your own medicinal herb garden. We use a lot of herbs here on uh, this homestead for a variety of different issues, everywhere from uh, fevers, colds, sore throats, um, stomach, little, ache. stomach aches, uh, little cuts and scrapes, even bee stings. There's, a, there's an herb for that. So when it comes to growing your own herbs, that saves, possibly could save you a trip to the drugstore or even the uh, doctors, depending on the situation. Now, of course, we can say that if the uh, situation is serious enough, do not be afraid to go to your doctors. However, something as much as a sniffle can be taken care of with a nice cup of homegrown chamomile tea or a fever with yarrow. Yeah. So, or an earache, something just real simple. Exactly. So don't be afraid to you know, research the, the herbs that you use or want to use, and then you can grow them in your own pots and uh, your own pots and your own uh, containers separate from everything else, or make an herb garden with a raised bed or something that's just for your herbs and away from your vegetables and fruits. That way you can tend to them as they need to be tended. So again, a medicinal herb garden is a wonderful way for any homesteader, even if it's growing sage or growing up. What other herbs would you consider medicinal that's easy to grow? Um, mint, super easy. Great for um, stomach aches. Mm -hmm. Calendula. Great for bricks hitting your feet. An <laughs> another physical harm. Yeah, <laughs> it's great for inflammation. Um, thyme, oregano, they can be used for medicinal or culinary purposes. Dual purpose and delicious. 
Well, that's all we have for today. Um, these are the top 10 ways that we have found successful to save money on our homestead. So tell us, um, what ways have saved you money? Uh, comment in the box below. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great week. Take it easy. A uh, pleasure for you to stop by.